Here's another one. It's called insertion sort. I'm not going to code this one with you, but I'll just talk about it. It's just an idea. Insertion sort is the following concept. You uh, think of the vector as having two regions to it. A region at the start that is sorted amongst itself, and another region that may not be sorted. And the idea is one at a time you're going to add elements to the sorted region until you've added the whole vector's worth of elements. Each time that you add in a new element, it's at the end. That might not be the right place for it with respect to the other sorted elements. Maybe your sorted region so far has 1, 4, 7, and 10. But now you add in a 6. So the rest was sorted, but you just added somebody in in the wrong place. What you do is you slide them over one at a time until they're in the right place. So then you add one more element that might be out of place and slide them over till they're in place. So you're inserting one element into a sorted chunk over and over and over and over. That's what insertion sort does. Now, is that better or worse than selection sort? I think it's a good question. I could code it, I could run it, we could time it, and all of this kind of thing. Um, it turns out to also have an n squared runtime, but typically for various inputs, it seems to run a little faster than selection sort. Why is that? Well, because you end up walking around the array a little bit less, just for most uh, inputs that you would see. Um, Here's an example of the algorithm running, if that my uh, verbiage didn't really make it clear. You sort of pretend that initially the 15 is a sorted region of length 1. Now you say, OK, let's add 2 into that. Oops, he's out of place. Slide him over. Let's add 18 into that. Oops, he's out of place. Slide him over. Let's add 1 into that. Oops, he's out of place. Let's slide him over a lot. Now let's add 17 into that. It's already in place. Let's add 10 into that. Let's slide him over. So you're doing this. And to slide over, you are swapping neighbors repeatedly until you get to the right place. Okay? This algorithm is interesting because certain types of input, certain arrangements of the initial input have a big impact on the runtime of this algorithm. Can you think of an input arrangement that would come in initially that would cause this algorithm to be slower, to have more work to do? Yes? The opposite of a perfectly sorted list. If it's backwards, <laughs> then every element you add, you have to slide it all the way over. And then you add another one, you have to slide that one all the way over. And by contrast to what you just said, if the input were already sorted when we got it, this would go very quickly because nobody would have to slide over at all, right? So the interesting thing is if you feed this thing sorted input, you start getting growth of, of runtime that's more like O of n because it doesn't have to do much work at all. And if you feed it really, really unsorted, like basically reversed input, it's uh, still n squared, but it's got a more of a slope to it. It's much slower. So that's kind of interesting. What, you know, by contrast, the selection sort that we just coded kind of takes about the same amount of time to run, no matter what order the original inputs came in. But overall, its average is a little slower. But both n squared. There's code for insertion sort if you want to try it. Um, I guess I could run it real quick if you want. It hardly takes a second to run. Um, well, let's see. Here it is. Uh, yoink. Copy and paste. I've got my. Uh, where's Bogo sort? Did I delete him? Where'd Bogo go? He's all the way up there. There he is. Um, here's insertion sort. I just paste it in. And then down here in main, instead of selection sort, I do insertion sort. And it's going, it's going. Um, the input that's being fed to this thing is random input, so therefore it's going to be sort of an average case of the runtime of the algorithm overall. I guess these numbers don't mean too much, but what you look at is the delta. It's about times 4 again, right? You're seeing that growth rate of times 4, so that means we're probably looking at an n-squared algorithm again. If you want to compare it to selection sort, you can look here. Here were the runtimes for selection sort. So selection sort to do 2560 took that long, and this one took about what? Like a a third or fourth less than that. 10, 240, uh, on this one took seven seconds, on this one took five seconds. It's just it's a little faster, right? It's not like twice as fast or 10 times as fast, but it's a little bit faster, right? Still has the n squared growth. So that's important to notice. And so I guess what you're seeing, you know how we talk, when we talk about big O, I say, oh, don't worry about constant uh, factors if it's n squared times 3 or n squared divided by 2. Those are all n squared. And you might say, well, this is a case where I have two n squared algorithms, and one of them has like a higher constant factor in front of the n squared. So I do see a difference. It's not that there isn't a difference. But I'll tell you what, though. Even though one of them is faster, the fact that they're both n squared does sort of put them in the same bucket in the sense that there gets to be an input size where these are too slow. And that place comes in a similar uh, 
rage for both of them. Like once we start getting up to 20, 40, 50,000 elements, these just start really crawling. That's no good. Okay? So even though insertion sort's better, it's not like a lot better. So let me copy this and paste this insertion sort. Paste there. Okay. We can do better.